Welcome back. A new scientific paper published this week alleges that Southern Nevadans are being exposed to unhealthy levels of asbestos and that people might be dying as a result. The report, written in part by two UNLV geologists, says dozens of local residents have died from a rare form of cancer known to be linked to asbestos materials. Now, state health officials have said there is, quote, no risk from asbestos. So what's the real story here? George Knapp, the I team, is here on the weekend to kick off a major investigative process. Project, Nevada's toxic threat. Well, Sharia, if people are just now learning that Southern Nevada has natural asbestos deposits, that's no accident. Two UNLV geologists made their initial discovery almost five years ago. They tried to let the public know and enlist the help of other scientists to investigate possible health effects. But state health officials stopped them dead in their tracks and reportedly even tried to stop reporters from writing stories about it. Tonight, how the discovery was made and where the asbestos can be found. In a desert area on the edge of Henderson, two scientists wearing what look like spacesuits poke and pick through outcroppings of rock, looking for telltale evidence. Oh my God. It was right here. I mean, this is really bad. UNLV geologists Brenda Buck and Rod Metcalf have no trouble finding surface deposits of a bluish green mineral. It's all over the place. The outcrop over there had amazing green fiber. The research began five years ago in an area known as the Nellis Dunes, a playground for off-roaders. Dr. Buck discovered excessive levels of arsenic, which is why warning signs were erected. But she also found something else, something unusual for this geology, fibrous minerals, in a word, asbestos. Well, these are the six regulated minerals in the public presentation she has since delivered to dozens of groups, Dr. Buck explains there is no single asbestos mineral. It was natural that the scientists would turn to asbestos. It's a commercial term that covers hundreds of minerals, some of which form amphiboles, that is, elongated crystalline fibers. Only six of those fibers are subject to federal regulations. And the reason we care is that these fibrous minerals cause disease. Again, we have six of them that are regulated, but there are over 400 minerals that are also fibrous in shape. The health effects of most of these minerals have not been studied to any degree, Buck says. Some may not be harmful at all, but the six which have been studied are deadly. Whenever NOA, naturally occurring asbestos, is disturbed, either by nature or by human activity, the fibers can become airborne. They're too small to be seen. Once in the air, they can float for days. The danger comes when they're ingested or inhaled. The fibers are indestructible, which means the body cannot defend itself against them. The greater the exposure, the greater the health risk. It's a tough problem. These patients have severe pain. Renowned cancer uh, researcher Dr. Nicholas Vogelzang of the Comprehensive Cancer Center says the miracle mineral that doesn't burn has been causing disease in humans at least back to the ancient Romans. These fibrous minerals and the link to disease. No question that X causes Y, right? No, there's no question. There's a body of medical literature. There's a large body of legal literature. Um, there's a large body of uh, basic science literature. Vogelzang says many people are protected by genetics. They can be exposed but not get sick. Others have increased risk because of other exposures. We believe that asbestos is a co-carcinogen with other chemicals. For example, uh, smoking. Look at this. After her discovery in the Nellis Dunes, Brenda Buck sought help. She asked specialists at the University of Hawaii to scour Nevada health records to see if there were any unusual spikes in disease rates. Dr. Francine Bauman and her team accessed the Nevada Cancer Registry, a database managed by state health officials. What they found was a disturbing pattern of deaths from mesothelioma, the one disease which is undeniably linked to asbestos fibers. Because the results showed higher than normal exposures for women and younger people, the research team was pretty sure there must be asbestos in the environment somewhere. So Buck approached her fellow UNLV geologist, Dr. Rod Metcalf, who coincidentally had already found deposits of the same fibrous minerals just across the Colorado River in Arizona, a canyon where bluish rocks are abundant. 
But what you found is there's a lot of it out there. I mean, a lot. There's a lot more of it, yeah. And, and Using their own model, Buck and Metcalf made predictions about where they might find deposits of asbestos fibers. Their model proved depressingly accurate, as this map indicates. That first study, we did 43 samples. Every single one of them had uh, fiber samples. This is our model for predicting where it occurs. And as you can see, most of southern Nevada is predicted. They found it in the McCullough Mountains, adjacent to neighborhoods, a college campus, an elementary school. Their model predicts it will be found over a huge swath of southern Nevada. But as they prepared to make their findings public in 2012, they received a cease and desist order sent by their employer, the state of Nevada. The state threatened legal action if they publish any data from the cancer registry. The professors were stunned, but they complied. We are breathing asbestos fibers, and I want to know how much, and I want to know who's at risk, and what can we do to make our, our lives healthier? And I feel like they're not helping. I mean, I, I, it's hard for me to imagine that the primary concern here is the health and safety of the citizens in Southern Nevada. I'm a citizen of Southern Nevada. My children are citizens of Southern Nevada. My grandchildren are citizens of Southern Nevada. And from that standpoint, I'm a bit outraged. State health officials told us one reason they were worried about this news getting out is they didn't want to start a panic. They also say there is, quote, no risk from asbestos. Over the course of the next five nights, we'll lay out the evidence so far. Other experts we contacted agree there is no need for panic. You don't have to sell your house and move away, but there is almost certainly reason to be concerned. We put together a massive collection of reports and background information available on our website, and we confront state health officials tomorrow night. So many people live out there go out in these remote areas, how can we protect ourselves? There's some common sense ways. I mean, the more exposure, the higher the risk. So you want to limit your exposure. Wearing a mask if you're in dust storms, weatherproofing your home. We're going to have a whole piece on that later in the week. I look forward to it. That's right. powerful. We never know what we're exposed to, George. Thanks. Amazing. Two UNLV professors say they were intimidated by the state health officials who ordered them to keep quiet about evidence of a possible threat to public health. The initial discovery was made almost five years ago. A research team that included two UNLV geologists found hints that asbestos deposits might be making people sick. But the findings were kept quiet after state officials threatened to drop the hammer on the researchers. Was it uh, scientific censorship? Well, George Knapp of the I team put that question to state health officials as part of our week-long project, Nevada's Toxic Threat. Okay, what was uncovered by these researchers could represent a major threat to public health. The evidence so far is preliminary, but it's being taken seriously by other government entities. Not so for state health officials. They not only say there is, quote, no risk from natural asbestos scattered around southern Nevada, they took direct action to stop the information from getting to the public. Getting a straight answer from them proved a daunting challenge. No matter what, when we get home, we strip off and wash immediately, get everything in the laundry, try not to bring it into the house to our families. Brenda Buck and her colleague Rod Metcalf are sometimes chided yeah, for overdoing it when they slip into their protective indoors. suits. But they know the deadly history of asbestos. The two have spent the past few years mapping the location of potentially lethal fibers in southern Nevada and have found it over a wide swath, including much of Henderson and Boulder City. Asbestos fibers cause a range of diseases, including cancers. In 2012, Buck and Metcalf were preparing to release a paper which revealed a possible link between asbestos and elevated levels of mesothelioma in southern Nevada. The paper was co-written by a team of epidemiologists at the University of Hawaii, but before it was issued, an abstract or synopsis was written and published. That's when the state of Nevada swooped in to stop the research in its tracks. I got the cease and desist order 36 hours before I was to get on the plane to go to, to fly east to go to the Geological Society of America meeting where I was going to present this, uh, and it scared me. The cease and desist letter came from Chief Health Officer Dr. Tracy Green. It ordered the research to retract their abstract, stop any publishing, and to not speak about their findings in public or face legal action. They were also told they could never again access the Nevada Cancer Registry. It seemed um, very heavy-handed and, and no discussion.
The legal basis for the state action was this, an agreement signed by the lead investigator, Dr. Francine Bauman of Hawaii. If the team was to be allowed access to the Nevada Cancer Registry, it had to promise that nothing could be published until the state reviewed and approved it. Even though the abstract was just a summary, not a paper, the state considered it a violation of the contract. Bauman says she was shocked. I work in France, but I've never seen that public data you, you could be uh, forbidden for... What Dr. Bauman and her team had found uh, in the records was a strong of indication of environmental exposure, 133 cases of death from mesothelioma, an always fatal disease which is caused by asbestos fibers. What stood out is the number of women who died was three times the national average. The number of younger adults was five times the average. Those numbers told Buck and Metcalf there was natural asbestos somewhere. Um, we do have the minerals. They are here. Um, we did predict we would find them, and we did. Uh, RTC and the state found them, just as we said. But when the state issued its cease and desist order, all work on the paper stopped. Bauman sent a torrent of messages to state health officials, apologizing for the abstract, but pleading that they allow the research to continue and to go public. The answer was no. The cancer registry is public information managed by a public agency. So what issue was so important that the study needed to be shut down? We met the officials who made the decision, but answers were hard to get. All of our data is public, our lists are public, so the information is, is available to the public. Except if you say no. I mean, um, we only say no if there's been disregard or contractual break. So what's important is the contract, the one which says the state has to approve of any report Bauman makes public. It's public information. Correct. But it can only be released if you say yes. No, that's not true. You just told me that you, you review it, though. We review it before it is requested to be released. We don't determine whether it's to be released or not. So in this case, mm -hmm. where the cease and desist order was issued, is the problem with the content of the paper or the problem is that they didn't ask for permission to publish that abstract? I would say that everybody is entitled to publish anything. We are in a free country. The issue is if you violate the contract that it has to be reviewed by the state health officer. Although the work stopped when the state issued the cease and desist, the state denies interfering with the work. But I mean, you told them no. Is that right? I mean, that you did tell them no. We didn't really tell them no. You can publish anything you want. Right. What is the cease and desist order then? What did that say? The cease and desist specifically told them that they were not allowed to reaccess data from us because of their blatant disregard for the contract they had signed. And the contract being, you have to clear it with us before you publish. You have to provide it to us, not clear it by us, but provide it to us to review prior to requesting publication anywhere publicly. So if they had provided this and followed the rule, you would have had no problem with that paper. Absolutely not. But in all of the correspondence that followed, the content of the paper, that is, the discussion of a possible link to disease, is the dominant issue raised by the state. So to my mind, they're, they're using this as an excuse because they don't like the interpretation. I think what's more important here is they're putting that ahead of the health of the citizens right. of Southern Nevada. Even though the officials told us the cancer registry is public information, in the next breath they said the records are also confidential. They need to restrict access to protect privacy. The research team says there was never any issue about breaching privacy. To them, it sounds like an excuse for clamping down on their work. There's another place where the powers that be hid evidence of a health threat from asbestos, Libby, Montana, and we'll take you there tomorrow. All right, All right. look forward to that. All right, George, and we have a website set up on 8 News Now to help you through the asbestos issue. It includes tips on how to reduce your exposure, including simple steps like uh, removing shoes so you don't track dirt in the home and wetting down a garden before digging in it. Go to 8newsnow.com and look for the banner that says Nevada's toxic threat or use the keyword asbestos. The largest environmental and public health disaster in American history isn't 
Three Mile Island or Love Canal. It's in Libby, Montana, where the effects of asbestos fibers are still being felt years after a mining operation was shut down. Today, the EPA announced it finalized a cleanup plan for Libby, a plan that was 15 years in the making. The EPA has spent more than a half a billion dollars to clean the asbestos out of Libby's air and environment. Nevada has asbestos concerns of its own, as we've been learning in this week's iTeam series. George Knapp recently traveled to Libby and is here now with that story. See if this sounds familiar. For years, Montana health officials, political leaders, and business executives assured the residents of Libby there was nothing to worry about, even as hundreds became seriously ill after breathing asbestos fibers into their lungs. It wasn't just the workers at a major mine and mill who got sick. The fibers were in the air because of all kinds of human activity and there could be a lesson in here for Nevada. Few places look cleaner than northern Montana. Scenic vistas in every direction, a sportsman's paradise. In the heart of the Kootenai National Forest is Libby. City of Eagles, they call it, not only because of the massive eagle sculptures that dot the town, but because the skies and trees are filled with the real deal. Also here, the world's largest frying pan. But Libby's ultimate claim to fame, or infamy, is a legacy of death, epitomized by a shuttered mine site. Well, I've been diagnosed as having asbestos disease. I've got pleural thickening on my lungs. And, uh, but <clears throat> I, was, I'm a, I, I would consider myself one of the fortunate ones. Leroy and Tom is that lucky that compared to many of his neighbors. So, his exposure to asbestos fibers while working at a mill site back in the 70s hasn't killed him yet. So a lot of people you know have died, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How many people do you know have been affected by it one degree or another? A lot of people? Oh, lots. I mean, hundreds. The population of Libby today is around 2,600. Nearly 400 residents are known to have died from asbestos exposure. Around 7,000 people who have lived here since the 50s are still being treated or monitored for asbestos disease by the town's asbestos center known as CARD. That's maybe the tip of the iceberg because this material and people traveled out away and uh, who knows with the full impact. Dr. Brad Black has seen hundreds of his friends and neighbors buried in the town cemetery. The suffering they endure while struggling to breathe is unimaginable. You'll have people that have been through the world, world War II, they've been through injuries, they've been through major surgeries, but if you ask them uh, their biggest challenges, you know, challenges, they'll Without a doubt, it's, it's been not knowing when your last breath is coming each day. And so it is a very miserable kind of, uh, of, of, of way to have to uh, part from the world. The source of the suffering lies just below the topsoil around Libby. For most of the 20th century, vermiculite was mined and milled here. It's a multi-purpose mineral used in insulation, fireproofing, even potting soil. Millions of tons were extracted from the main mine, then transported through town and sent all over the world. Tons came to Nevada as insulation in strip hotels. Libby vermiculite was one of the main contaminants when the World Trade Center fell. Mixed into the vermiculite were asbestos-like minerals. In Libby, the fibers were everywhere. A gigantic pile built up in the rail yard next to the town's baseball field, and kids would play on it for hours. Locals were allowed to take as much as they wanted for use as a garden fertilizer. It was insulation in most of the homes in town, and it was in the air. The company which operated the mine W.R. Grace knew its employees were getting sick because of exposure. Internal memos released years later show the longer a worker was employed at the mine, the more likely it was they developed lung disease. Montana political leaders, like the mine operators, looked the other way. It wasn't until a Seattle newspaper blew the lid off the scandal in 1999 that the EPA moved in and started to clean up the mess. Oh, no, uh, they weren't honest, no. Red but, Munsell uh, says he was exposed uh, to asbestos via the dusty clothes again, his father wore home from the mine. Years. He's had lung cancer twice and could barely make it out of the clinic before he had to stop to breathe. His wife and son are also sick. Yeah, your mother had it, Red, I think, yeah. because she was on oxygen 24 hours a day and yeah. she couldn't breathe. Yeah. So your, your wife, your mother, your son? Mm -hmm. Daughter. Daughter? Mm -hmm. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a terrible, it's a terrible disease.
Yeah, it is because you're, you know you're going to suffocate before you before you die. Yeah. yeah, lots of people have died that we know, people we work with, people that up here. Lyra Parker has been diagnosed with lung disease, so has her husband and her daughter, who used to watch the dust clouds as the heavy trucks rumbled past their property. Their nursery sits on the river just outside the mine. It was off limits for years as the EPA removed all the soil. The family lost more than their health. We lost everything. They came in here and they destroyed everything. We went out of here with the shirts on our back, basically. Because of the long latency period, Dr. Black thinks there could be hundreds of people who've not yet developed asbestos disease and more who are sick but have resisted getting diagnosed. Not everyone who gets exposed gets sick, he says, but the greater the exposure, the greater the chance for disease. There's certainly ways to prevent the disease, and it's, it's very simple, you know, and, and is to don't stir it up. Nevada health officials told us there is no comparison between Libby and the natural asbestos that's been discovered here. And they told us we have nothing to worry about because of plans to build an interstate highway right through asbestos deposits around Boulder City. Two UNLV geologists who found the asbestos here say Southern Nevada has fibers that are nearly identical to those in Libby. Tomorrow we take a closer look at the highway plan and we'll take you to an elementary school with a field of asbestos in its front yard. What? Always troubling when they say there's nothing to worry nothing about. Nothing to worry about. Yeah, it's always a it's always at least a question mark. Yes. Thank Thanks, you, George. George. A controversial research project investigating possible health effects from natural asbestos was the hot topic this week at a national science conference in California. Yeah, a paper written in part by two Nevada geologists was singled out for praise by other scientists, but this is the same research team that was shut down by the state of Nevada back in 2012. State health officials accused the team members of violating a contract provision and of trying to scare the public. Since the state tried to shut them down, the researchers have been busy looking for asbestos and they certainly found it. Tonight in our I-Team series, Nevada's Toxic Secret, George Knapp takes us on an asbestos tour. Yeah, yeah it sounds like fun, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. it, it? In a way, this is sort of indication for these two geologists. Their paper looked at disease rates and it predicted there must be asbestos out there somewhere. After health officials shut them out, they kept quiet but busy looking for natural asbestos that would prove their theory was right. They found it in Boulder City, in Henderson, in places where wind and erosion can send those tiny fibers all over Southern Nevada. And what did you find in this? Field? We found uh, actinolite asbestos, so regulated asbestos minerals. And, and it's in the, in the rock and the soil. Dr. Brenda Buck has become so accustomed to finding that asbestos that, that, that she can sometimes ice. spot it while driving down the road. Boulder City's Adams Boulevard in particular is asbestos central. Well, sometimes in, ha in the hand lens, which is this, uh, you can actually see the, the structure. So in other words, you see the shape of the fibers. So there's no question that No, that this has... both of these have it. And it's, this it's this green and bluish color is fibers. We she and her colleague, Dr. Rod Metcalf, confirmed the find in their well. lab and had a third party review it as well. The long outcropping on Adams Boulevard is a popular place for hiking, biking, and walking dogs. And it's right across the street from a neighborhood that gets dusted with asbestos every time the wind blows. Further down we Adams, she spots something in the landscaping of a public park. Now it's probably here. This looks like it. You spotted it from the road? Yeah. And one block yeah, further. Look at this. Look at that blue. That is, that is it. So this face is very rich and then you'll also, they'll be inside here, the dark little dots. It's a field directly in front of Martha King Elementary School. The rock and soil have high concentrations of actinolite asbestos. They, they built the school on ground zero practically. Yeah, definitely. See, look at all the green. It's everywhere. And these are the high concentration, the green. Asbestos was also found on public property adjacent to this Boulder City horse stable. Buck says she stabled her own horse here for years. She wonders how many fibers are being ingested by riders and their horses and says when rodeos are held here. And I've been here for it and I see little kids just crawling all over this. It breaks my heart now that I know what's here. The McCullough Mountains have concentrated asbestos higher up, and the geologists say erosion is likely carrying it down into the El Dorado Valley. 
Out on the dry lake bed, long a playground for off-roaders, the frequent dust clouds are loaded with fibers. On the Henderson side of the McCullough Range, there's asbestos around the Nevada State campus. Oh, this looks worse. They also found a lot of it on public lands adjacent to a large housing development, land traversed by residents every day. They should know that this is here. Yeah, they should know. Yeah, they should know. And of course, we've seen, um, you know, big, eight, you know, two, three ATVs or, or uh, you know, four, four wheel drive vehicles out here, and they just put out huge plumes of dust. If you're the second one of those in a train of second or third behind a lead vehicle, you're getting pretty well dosed. The images that haunt them most are back at King Elementary. The I-Team observed over several days as students and locals exposed themselves to asbestos fibers in the field next to the school. Kids hiked down from the school, climbed on the rocks, they stomped on the gravel, skateboarded in the dust, bounced balls, got fibers on their clothes and backpacks. Moms with infants rolled their strollers in and around the fiber-filled field. During one of our visits to the school, Dr. Buck oh, found crazy. rocks that school stopped her in her here. tracks. Ooh, look at this. Oh my God, that is so blue. Yikes. I'm tempted to test this yet again, but generally that blue color is suggestive of the Libby minerals. In Libby, Montana, school kids played on heaping piles of asbestos, the byproduct of a mining operation. Because of the long latency period, they didn't start getting sick until 20 or 30 years later. Hundreds of people in Libby died and thousands developed serious illnesses. State and federal agencies knew of the danger for years, but the public was assured there was no risk. So there was a sense of complacency. A, 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 false, a false confidence that your agencies were operating the way they you know, should operate. But at that stage, I did, we didn't understand how politics had so much to do with how agencies work. And in this circumstance, we don't see an increased risk to the community. Nevada and health officials Dr. have Rizan's parsed their words carefully, really saying the discovery of asbestos in Clark County does not by itself increase the risk to the public. Now, there is no risk. No risk? The risk for the people in southern Nevada in Clark County and in Nevada is not increased, is what I said. The state epidemiologist notes the asbestos has been in the ground for thousands of years but hasn't resulted in mass deaths. Libby, Montana had much greater exposure because of a mining operation that freed asbestos into the environment, Dr. Azam notes. But would there be higher risk if a large project here disturbed natural asbestos in the ground? say, an interstate highway through the heart of Nevada's asbestos deposits. So let's hope the Boulder City Bypass is one of those many groundbreakings we celebrate today and in the years to come. As you probably know, a bypass for Interstate 11 is being built right through some of the asbestos deposits. If not for the UNLV geologists and their discovery, they would never have known about the risks. While the health department thinks the risk is low, other agencies see it differently. We'll hear from some of them tomorrow. Also, it took a while, but we finally got a comment from the school district about asbestos at Martha King Elementary. The district was first told about it almost two years ago. They finally met with the researchers last month, then told us, quote, they have no plans to disturb the soil at the school. The research team is not permitted to take samples on private property, so they don't have a street-by-street -street map where asbestos is located, as some of you have asked, but we do have a general map on our website. Wow. Great report. Thanks, George. Thanks. Don't stir it up. Lawmakers are close to passing a bill to give the Nevada Division of Health greater power to restrict access to the cancer registry. AB 42 would allow the Health Division to restrict which researchers can access the database. Access to the cancer registry is at the heart of a major scientific controversy we've been exploring this week in our I-Team series, Nevada's Toxic Threat. Tonight, evidence collected by other government agencies which contradicts statements made by those who control the cancer registry.
George Knapp is here with more on that story. Well, you know, the reason we became interested in this story is because the uh, health officials engaged in what looked like a blatant case of scientific censorship. Under current rules, anyone who uses the Nevada Cancer Registry for research has to sign multiple forms, which stop them from publishing anything until it's approved by state officials. In 2012, a team wanted to publish a paper which found evidence that Southern Nevadans are dying because of exposure to natural asbestos. Health officials forbid them from publishing it, then banned them from ever using the cancer registry again. State health officials have since made numerous statements that natural asbestos is not a threat to public health. Tonight, we learn that other government agencies disagree. <laughs> Politicians of every stripe turned out in April for a groundbreaking ceremony for the Interstate 11 bypass near Boulder City. Speakers praised the potential economic benefits, but no one uttered the A word, asbestos. If not for the work of two UNLV geologists, the bypass project would have begun a year earlier, and hundreds of workers would have been directly exposed to the asbestos hidden in the rocks and soil in the path of the highway. In 2012, state health officials decided there was no risk to the community from natural asbestos. They threatened to sue the geologists if they went ahead and publicized their findings. The professors, both state employees, were intimidated but didn't quit. Once we got that cease and desist order, we went underground and we did all this work without presenting anything at any more meetings. For a year, they took samples and gathered evidence. Their colleague, Dr. Francine Bauman, shut out by the Nevada Cancer Registry, found a way to get cancer data anyway. She went to the CDC, which gathers cancer information from each state. CDC officials told her they were appalled that a state would block a paper from being published. Everybody that I know was really first surprised and say that it should not be, that it, it's not acceptable. Bauman Everybody was able to replicate her original findings, namely that for Southern Nevada, women and younger people showed a much higher than normal risk for mesothelioma, an always fatal cancer, and that natural asbestos could be the cause. In late 2013, the team sent out letters to every agency and entity they could think of, trying to get the word out before the state could shut them down again. They even reached out to state health, which ignored their offer to meet. But, but the thing that did surprise me is, is how adamant and quickly the state health people were resistant. Uh, they, it was like a stone wall. Uh, they didn't want to talk to us, and they never once asked about the minerals. Instead, the state took the offensive. On its website, it assured the public that Nevada's mesothelioma numbers put us in the middle of the rankings. In interviews with the New York Times and KNPR, they repeated their claims that asbestos presents no risk. This is a letter sent to Tracy Green in April of last year seeking a dialogue. Has they, they reached out to you? You know what I mean? No? Not that Not I know. Absolutely, they didn't reach out to us. We showed them the letter. Um, and again, I don't have this letter, so I don't know how it came to me. Um. Other agencies and political entities not only responded to the letter, but took it seriously. Here's the list of those who responded and or sought meetings with the research team. Among those most interested were NDOT and RTC, both working on the I-11 bypass. The highway project came to a halt. We were uh, surprised initially but really thankful uh, that we became aware at a place where we could we hadn't awarded any construction contracts so immediately we stopped you know, and, and bottom line what comes back to us is it's safety first for us it's right. safety for the public and it's safety for the workers we're putting out there NDOT and RTC took action to protect workers the public and the project they brought in experts and confirmed what the geologists had found asbestos all around the proposed highway air samples last summer found fibers at twice the federal safety standard a plan was created to protect workers and minimize how much asbestos gets into the the air during construction in contrast to their colleagues at state health we did we took it very seriously so did the EPA the federal agency sampled rocks in all the same places where doctors Buck and Metcalf had been EPA declared that the concentration of fibers in the air is quote high enough to raise considerable concern 
This is a list of governments which showed no interest in meeting with the geologists or seeing their evidence. Officials in Boulder City, which is surrounded by natural asbestos, declined to meet with the team but got the headline they wanted. The mayor announced the asbestos threat was, quote, taken care of since the highway project would meet OSHA standards for safety. After the EPA and others confirmed that a health risk is real, especially for highway workers, state health honchos sang a slightly different tune. Again, we've never said that the occupational workers or the construction workers could not be at increased risk. We've never said that. Well, you said We're there's no risk, no, no to increased risk. the community. No one in their yeah. right mind can say that there is no risk. Yeah. All of us are breathing asbestos fibers in the air. There's a higher risk for people who are breathing higher concentrations. As we reported earlier this week, the dispute with state health officials has focused largely on cases of mesothelioma. It's such a rare cancer that some think it's not worth our concern, but it's more likely that uh, it's sort of like a canary in a coal mine or a tip of the iceberg. For every case of mesothelioma, there might be five or six other types of cancer, plus other lung diseases caused by asbestos, but never diagnosed as such. Tomorrow, in the finale of our series, Lessons Learned, and on our website, a list of the agencies that look the other way, plus some tips on how to limit your exposure. Basically, simple things, stay out away from dust because that's where yeah. this stuff lurks. <laughs> so they're watering down some of those sites where I-11. For the project, yeah. they're going to water yeah. it down. We're going to get into whether that takes care of the problem uh, or not. Okay, thanks, George. Thank you, George. Public health officials in Nevada haven't always been candid about possible risks. Decades ago, we were told that fallout from above-ground nuclear tests was not causing disease, and our state was slow to react to reports about secondhand smoking. High-ranking health officials have assured us in recent years that we have nothing to fear from naturally occurring asbestos in the rocks, the soil, the air. But new research is casting considerable doubt on that viewpoint. George Knapp is here with the conclusion of our I-Team series, Nevada's Toxic Threat. You know, we've heard some wild statements since we began this project, uh, statements about how there is no risk, fears about public panic. There's a lot of gray area between no risk on one hand and public panic on the other. More than anything, what we need is more information. The study that found asbestos deposits is largely the work of just three people, and they could use some help. Tonight, some odds and ends and final thoughts, including the story of a Metro officer who learned the hard, hard way about what asbestos can do. Picturesque Libby, Montana is finally bouncing back from its unwelcome status as the asbestos capital of the country. The air is clean. Teams are monitoring the water. The sick are being treated. If not for Libby's familiarity with the effects of asbestos, things could be much different for a former Las Vegas man. I lived in Boulder City for eight years. Tom Chasey is a retired Metro police officer who lived in Boulder City and then Henderson and spent much of his off-duty time in dust. I was into ATVs, uh, off-road biking, metal detecting, a little bit of everything in the, in the outdoors desert area. I did a lot of riding down around the dry lake bed and then uh, south of that area. His Henderson home was on the edge of the desert and would get blasted with dust. When he started having breathing problems, doctors here chalked it up to his smoking habit. Uh, unfortunately, they, they blew it off as just being strictly COPD. It wasn't until he moved to Libby that he got the straight story. Doctors at the card center told him his lungs were scarred from asbestos exposure, most likely from the dust. Do you remember, did your doctors when you were down here, was there any, anybody ever ask, hey, were you exposed? do asbestos as a part of a questionnaire? No, no, I, I was never asked that. If you hadn't moved to Libby, you would never have found out no. what the cause was. No, I would have. I would have never. I would have never been diagnosed. I have no doubt about that. This is a magnified look at a crystalline fiber from Boulder City, like the ones now lodged in Tom Chasey's lungs. The fibers mean every day is a struggle for him to breathe, and Tom's doctors have told him his lungs will likely become cancerous soon. As Nevada grapples with the scope of health effects from asbestos, the lesson is clear. Doctors here are not looking for it. If you're in the general practice of medicine, you're you're not likely to know very much about it. You really need to know about exposure. You need to know if somebody's been exposed. Otherwise, you could, you could uh, diagnose another condition because uh, the findings are many times nonspecific. But that's why when I hear comments like it's safe, 
that, that really bothers me. I, Geologists I Rod Metcalf and Brenda Buck are part of the team that found the asbestos so deposits and proposed really a possible link to mesothelioma the deaths. They suspect the true impact of asbestos exposure could be much larger than anyone suspects. But local doctors don't ask about asbestos when evaluating patients, and even if they did, patients don't know they've been exposed. There's no question asbestos causes mesothelioma, but there's a wide range of other diseases that are linked to it. Just about any organ could be affected, including the heart, lungs, and stomach. If environmental exposure is causing mesothelioma deaths, then the true effects could be many times worse. So it's the tip of the iceberg. And these are all the other diseases, ovarian cancers called, caused by asbestos, pleural fibrosis, asbestosis, and then these other things, depressed immune function, cardiovascular disease, gastrointestinal disease, autoimmune disease. When you have one case of mesothelioma, you have about three cases of lung cancer, and you can have other of disease. Francine Bauman's paper about mesothelioma and asbestos got her banned from using the Nevada Cancer Registry. State officials insisted it was because she didn't submit her paper to the state for approval. State officials repeatedly said there is, quote, no risk from natural asbestos. They've had to change that tune after another state agency, NDOT, implemented OSHA standards to protect workers on the Interstate 11 bypass. As this map indicates, that highway will plow right through the heart of asbestos deposits between Boulder City and Henderson, and will use explosives and heavy equipment to stir up a lot of dust. The health officials now admit the workers will be at risk after all, but not the public, they say. It sort of goes contrary to what you're saying, that there is no risk. You said no risk. To the community. Please understand me, I'm talking about community Only to the workers. and construction Correct. workers. Construction workers will have increased risk. Buck and Metcalf say the distinction is preposterous. They applaud NDOT for implementing measures to protect employees up to OSHA standards, but they note those standards don't eliminate risk for workers or the public. Millions of gallons of water will be sprayed to keep the dust down during construction, but the next day when it dries... The next ATV that comes around or the next dust storm that comes around is going to pick that. So it doesn't disappear, it doesn't go away. Dust from the bypass could be carried into the Las Vegas Valley because the wind blows this direction at times. Even more of it could be stirred up if plans carry through for large, high-density housing projects in the El Dorado Valley on the edge of today's gravel pits, an area known for asbestos deposits. Avoid the dust as much as you can and pay attention to where they say this stuff is and don't go there. Or if you do, use a, use a dust mask, you know, like the, like the painters do and stuff like that. I know it's kind of not very macho, but down the road it may save your life. According to OSHA, there is no such thing as a safe level of asbestos. The greater the exposure, the greater the risk. There's no need to panic, of course, but the closer you live to those deposits, the more you're likely to ingest. So there are simple steps you can take, basically, to protect yourself from dust. There are tips on our website. Also, Clark County Air Quality has posted information about asbestos and how to protect yourself and your family. Bottom line is, we really need a lot more information. How much of it's out there, where it's found, how much yeah. of it's mm -hmm. in our air, and especially on the consequences of for public health. Uh, we've all got it. Not everybody gets sick, but the more you get, yeah. the, the more dangerous you become. Yeah. And we're going to stay on this. We're going to stay right. with it. Thank you, George. Great job.